Good morning, guys. Welcome back to All Right, What's Next? Uh, talking about fucking lathe today. Uh, this tool shop freaking lathe, this is my original lathe that I bought, I don't know, I think about 15 years ago. Uh, it's really cheap. I got it from uh, a big box uh, hardware store called uh, Menards. I don't know if you got them in your area or not, but Tool Shop brand is like their bottom of the barrel, extraordinarily cheap tools. It's something that's like, I don't own this. I have one thing that I've got to get freaking accomplished and I need the tool to last long enough to get through one small project. So you go buy the Tool Shop brand because you're not going to expect it to freaking last for very goddamn long. Now this has actually lasted quite a long time and, and it still works. Well, I wouldn't say fine. It still works. You turn it on and this dealy spins. What's nice about this one and why it is still in my shop is because between centers, I've got roughly a 38 and a half inch spindle length that I can freaking turn on this thing. Where my new lathe, the, uh, the Turncrafter 12 inch lathe, it's got about, I think about 15 inch between centers is all you can freaking do. So that one's very limited on the length of what you can freaking turn. Problem with this thing is it's made out of just sheet metal. It's just stamped freaking sheet metal. There is absolutely no weight to this thing. There is no vibration dampening to this thing. And it's a, well, a cheap piece of shit. Like all the little freaking clamps and everything that, that you, uh, the handles that you'd use to, to turn these things, to tighten down the, your tool rests, uh, the tailstock freaking, <laughs> this thing freaking snapped off. So to make this thing work, I use a lot of freaking channel locks to be able to tighten shit down. This is taking up space. I want to convert this box into a, a storage rack, hopefully, something to organize my pile of hardwood boards that I've got literally just fucking piled up over there on the bench behind my, my new lathe. I don't want to get rid of this box because it's where I have my pencil sharpener freaking screwed down to. I don't want to lose the freaking cool area for my pencil sharpener. I mean, <laughs> this is the reason why I bought this house. When we came out here with the realtor and walking around, we were out in one of the outbuildings and this was screwed to the wall. And I'm, I'm probably an idiot, but I got so freaking excited when I seen this pencil sharpener, because I remember using them in like elementary school. It's like, they are the best. It's got that, that them overlaid little grinders in there that freaking twist in there and just sharpen pencils so freaking nice. So I have a $135,000 pencil sharpener. It came with a free house. But I want to get rid of this lathe, but my current lathe isn't long enough. So we've got to make my current lathe longer. So let's, let's go over there. All right, so I got the tailstock extended out as far as it's gonna freaking go. And we're sitting at between centers, roughly 15 and a half. So that's still a pretty decent span right there. Let me move this freaking camera up here just a little bit. Okay. But, Take into account, I put the uh, four jaw chuck on here. Once I screw the four jaw chuck on here, I lose even more space out to here. So, you know, now we're gonna be, the end of our piece is now gonna be sticking out about there. So now we're, yeah, we're down to about 14 inches. Still pretty decent, but what if you gotta drill something? So now you got, Got your drill chuck here. You go and throw the drill, drill freaking chuck in the tailstock. That sticks out another inch and a half to two inches further than the tailstock. Then you put a freaking drill bit in there. Then you're gonna have another, what, four inches of drill bit sticking out. So now you got, what? Go conservative. We've lost another five inches of space. So now we're down to 10 to 11 inches maximum usable space in here. And I think that's probably, that's probably actually not even close to what you get. You're probably 
after everything is bolted in here, you're looking at probably about eight inches of actual usable space for a piece of material to, to work with. And that's probably going to be enough for everything that I need to do out here. Need to do. Want to do. But I have some uh, pepper grinder projects that I want to do. And some of them uh, are variable length to where you can have up to a, I think it's a 14 inch pepper grinder. So a great big huge professional style pepper grinder. I won't be able to do it on this lathe. So we got a freaking length in this thing. Now, you know, we, I can get a come along out, freaking chain hoist, hook this thing off to a tree stump, heat this center up and we could probably fucking stretch it. But I bet you in the process, I would lose the tolerances between my headstock and tailstock. I might not maintain the, the perfect alignment once I start heating this thing up. So that's probably out the window. But the reason why I bought this lathe is because Turncrafter makes a extension bed to it. They actually make several different types of extension beds depending on your needs, how much space you have. I got the bigger one. So let's go over to, let's go over to the bench over there and uh, we'll unbox the thing and see what the fuck's in there. It's not as heavy as the freaking lathe is, but it's still pretty freaking, pretty heavy. Let me remove a couple of these decals here, because I don't want, before I start freaking opening this thing up, I don't want any of you fuckers knowing where I live. No offense, but uh, I don't like people. That's why I have a social media channel. All right, now I got all the addresses removed. I hope I got all the addresses removed. That'd look really stupid if fucking there was like a big address right there and I didn't realize it, but it's not. Instructions, parts, and hey, there's a washer right there. Make sure there's no other hidden washers. And then we don't need that no more. That goes there. Another washer. Are these instructions? The total length of your commander lathe bed can be increased to over 40 inches by the installation of the accessory bed extension. Please follow these instructions to install the bed extension to either your 12 or 10 inch turncraft or commander lathe. Remove the end plate from your lathe bed. Align the two holes at the end of the lathe bed with the two holes in the end of the extension bed. Fasten with two M10 by 30 hex head bolt lock washers and flat washers using 10 millimeter Allen key. Before tightening the bolt, slide the tailstock assembly to the end side of the lathe bed. Make sure half of the tailstock assembly is on. Okay. So, I got to do some rearranging over here. We got to take, actually, I think before we move it over there, we should probably put the feet on it. So, we got that. There's that. There's that. There's these two bolts, two washers. Two more washers, these are lock washers that don't really fucking lock for shit. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I really hope I didn't screw this whole video up because I got the window open right here, so I think I'm screwing up my...
I just looked in the monitor there and I noticed that fucking the screen keeps changing uh, color. Or not color, but uh, uh, brightness. So I've probably just fucked this video. All right, leveling feet. Let's go over here and move the lathe around. So we got to, I think, remove this handle. It ain't gonna fit on there with that. No, actually, I think the handle will stay on there. Yeah, that's a much longer lathe. All right, so we need to slide this guy out. Lock it in. I think we might need to lift this guy up. Let's get some bolts in it. Now it, it raised this whole freaking center section up. So we'll lower these feet down until they're good and solid. Because my bench probably ain't very fucking level. Hmm. That ain't fucking right. These guys are not very well lined up.
What the fuck, man? Let me get a, uh, I need a, what do you call it? A fucking straight edge. And we have a slight gap and you're you can see that by i'm sure you can can you see yeah there you, there you go see the the light through there now it's pretty minimal so it's not perfect all the way across but this slides and transitions from one to the other pretty nicely if we were trying to machine up some rocket parts or something. The slight difference. The other thing is, the weird variation is it's, it, it seems to dip more into the center. And then there might be also some freaking discrepancies with my, uh, my uh, straight edges I use because it's an extraordinarily old beat to shit freaking uh, framing square. But with the ability to have this just slide across, relatively smooth and you can feel a rise right here they're not 100 percent perfectly aligned i guess i could probably spend some more time sitting here and doing some micro adjustments to it and i'll probably end up doing that eventually but for right now oh yeah that's a pretty good size freaking lathe that'll come clear out to here lock that down where's my fucking tape measure Let's see, we are now out at 
42 inches between centers. So that's even bigger than that piece of shit over there. So we can turn some freaking spindles on there. And I increased the weight of this thing significantly. So hopefully that'll even help increase the dampening out any sort of, any sort of vibrations. But anyways, that's how you make it longer. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget, subscribe, like button, all that other stupid social media shit. See ya.